Hey there, welcome to day two of the 2023 advent of code. Let's jump straight into it. So yesterday, uh, I forgot to zoom in the code and the window, so some of you were not really able to read it, so I apologize for that. I'll remember to do that uh, in the future. So let's look at day two. Okay, so we're playing some sort of game, and each the elf shows us a bag, and there are some cubes that are red, green, or blue. And each time, the elf will hide some a secret number of cubes of each color in the bag. So we have a bunch of cubes in the bag, red, green, or blue. And now the elf will reach into the bag, grab a random number of random cubes, and show them to us, and then put them back in the bag. And so for each row, we have one game where he will pull out multiple groups, and each group will be separated by semicolons. So this group, he pulled out three blue, four red, this group, he pulled out one red, two green, six blue. And this last group, he only pulled out two green cubes. And so based on this information, the elf wants to know which of these games are possible if the bag has 12 red, 13 green, and 14 blue cubes. So for example, game three is impossible because here he pulls out 20 red cubes at once, except that's not possible here. And in this game, he pulls out 15 blue cubes at once, which is also not possible. And so essentially what we're trying to say is for each game, how many of them have all groups such that the number of red, green, and blue cubes pulled out at once do not exceed these limits? So were you counting the, uh, sorry, and going back, just be careful, the uh, output should be the sum of the IDs of the games and not the uh, number of games itself. So the games are numbered in ascending order, so we're not going to bother parsing the number out of this, as that's a bit annoying. So let's start it with a total of zero, and then what we can do is for each line of input, which we can grab using open zero to get an iterable of lines, we can enumerate that to give us a iterator where the first element is the index and the second is the line. And so, of course, i starts at zero, so we'll need to offset that by one when we actually add the t. And then at the end, we'll want to print out our uh, total value. So each time, we first want to start from after the colon and get all of this. We don't care about anything before. So um, x dot split colon space, and then the second element of that. And now we want to split that on semicolons to get the groups. So groups equals that. Let's just debug that. On our test data, we see that we get a list of groups for each line. And also, um, we need to add a space after the semicolon to get rid of the trailing space, uh, sorry, the leading space here. OK. And it doesn't hurt to trim off, the, uh, sorry, strip off the trailing new line, although this actually won't really affect too much. OK. So now we have each group, and so we we'll want to loop through each group for, um, I should have picked better variable names. Let's call this groups. For group in groups, we will want to split the group by commas. So we'll want to have a map of the number of each thing we've seen. So uh, m equals red zero, green zero, and blue zero. This creates an essentially empty map where we just start off with zero of each color of cube. And now for each uh, element in g dot split comma space, that gives us three blue, four red, etc. So if we print out e here and then run this test again, we see that we get each of the individual components. And now we can do a b equals e dot split to get us the number first and the color second, and then we can do uh, we can do mb equals int of a. And what that does is at the end of this loop, we've now uh, aggregated all of these numbers together, which will give us a map of the number of cubes of each color. Um, so now if we run this on our test, we see that uh, I should put this, no, this is correct. For the first group, we have three blue and four red and zero green, of course. For this group, we have one red, two green, six blue. And for the last one, we have two green, zero red, and zero blue. And so now we just need to check, is uh, the number of cubes impossible? So if the number of red cubes 
is greater than, what was the value again? 12, or the number of green cubes is greater than 13, or the number of blue cubes is greater than 14, then we can just break out of this for loop as it means this group, this game is impossible. And a neat thing you can do with Python is you can attach an else statement to a for loop and this will run if it doesn't break. So if it runs through each iteration without breaking, then the else block will trigger. If the break block runs, it will exit to right here. And so otherwise, if we don't break, then that means that this game is valid. So we add the game ID, which is I and then offset by one. And so if we run this, we get our answer. Moving on to part two. The elf wants us to know for each game what is the fewest number of cubes of each color that could be possible. So for example, for game one, we must have at least six blue because that was the most in any given group. We must have at least four red and we must have at least two green, which was observed twice. And so for each game, we essentially just need to take each group and figure out what the maximum scene of each color is across all the groups. And then the power of a set of cubes is equal to the product of the red, green, and blue cubes. So for example, here we have four red, two green, and six blue. So the product of that is 48. And finally, we want to get the sum of the power of each game. So we can start off at the beginning of each game using a, a total map. Let's call that TM for total map, which is going to be the minimum number of cubes of each color that must be present in this game. And so for each group, instead of checking if it's impossible, we just say for key in uh, TM, TM K is equal to max of TM K and M of K. What this does is it just says for each color, for each K being red, green, or blue, we will set the total aggregate map value to the minimum of what it currently is and what we've seen. And so at the end here, TM will represent the minimum number of cubes required for each game. So for the first one, we needed at least four cubes, four red, two green, and six blue cubes. For the second row, we see that we need at least one red, three green, and four blue, which matches up with all of the data that we see here, and so on. And so now we just need to take the red value, multiply it by the green value, and multiply it by the blue value. This could be done more intelligently if you had more keys, but we don't, so I'm just going to be lazy. And then we just add that to T, and that gives us our answer for part two. So yeah, this problem, definitely a lot simpler than uh, day one, in my opinion, which is kind of odd. It's true that not all of the days will be strictly an increasing order of difficulty, but I feel like this problem just seemed a lot more straightforward than day one, which required input parsing and had a bunch of weird finicky test cases that weren't very clearly explained. So I'm curious what you guys' thoughts were. In any case, that's all for this video. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.